underneath the arches. I dream my dreams. Mildred! I'll go. One of me suspenders is perished. Well, use an elastic band. Well, make me feet turn blue. But if it's a straight choice, George, I prefer blue feet to floppy socks. Now, come along. Put those legs away. <laughs> What's the matter? Getting you going, aren't they? <laughs> I've seen better legs on an oil rig. <laughs> now, come on, let me knot your tie properly. I always pull it too tight. Yes, well, I do get carried away sometimes. <laughs> now, look, I want you to look your best, George, because it's a very select neighbourhood. Yeah, all BBC Two and musical toilet rolls. <laughs> don't want to go, Mildred. Look, George. Ah, oh, there, it's Gary. I want to view a house today. Now, if you don't come with me, how will I know what you think of it? I won't like it. Who cares what you think? You're coming. <laughs> Has he brought our car back? Hey, uh, No. Right. That settles it. I am sick to death of that useless friend of yours. He's had that car for weeks. He's no more a motor mechanic than I am. Morning, Mrs. R. Good news. It'll be ready tomorrow. You said that yesterday. Uh, yesterday I said it'd be ready today. <laughs> Don't you play games with me. Well, the tricky thing is gearboxes, you know, George. Uh, Listen, let me explain. Uh, do you know anything about cars? No. <laughs> <laughs> It's your gudgeon pin, you see. <laughs> Slipped out of his woggle. <laughs> Foul in your aftershaft. <laughs> you can't get the doofers since they put the clocks back. <laughs> hey, uh, well, Jerry is the mechanic, my sweet. Well, not full time, George. I'm doing you a favour. Yeah. Now, my speciality is collecting antiques, objet d'art, rags. <laughs> well, we have to get to Hampton Wick by one o'clock. I am aware of that, and I'm placing myself and my vehicle at your disposal. I'm not going anywhere in that! I don't play on the lawn, it uh, bruises the grass. Can I go and play with the boys in the park? Uh, no, no, they're, uh, they're rough boys. <laughs> if I find a smooth boy... <laughs> uh, no, no, just play on the path. Uh, don't make a noise. Enjoy yourself. Oh, Tris! <laughs> Must get you a rug of all. Geoffrey? Hello, darling. Was I expecting you home? I doubt it, otherwise you'd been vacuum cleaning and looking harassed. I've just this minute sat, sat down. down. yes. Are you home for lunch? Or a five-minute frolic? Uh, careful, careful, not a half turn. Oh. No, I'm just, uh, just showing some people around next door. Ah, well, it'll have to be the window cleaner again. You couldn't, not with the window cleaner. I mean, he drops his H's. He drops everything when I was here. <laughs> Does he not? Well, I'd rather not know. It's difficult to get window cleaners. Oh, dear. That can't be them, can it? This is going to make a lovely impression on the new neighbours. Is that it? Yes. I don't like it. Get out! <laughs> oh, dear. Look at them neck curtains, waving about like semaphore flags. Yeah. Oh, now they're short. They think they've got because they've got two bolts. George, I have been sitting on sausage sandwiches. <laughs> my lunch. Still warm. <laughs> afternoon, Mrs. Roper? Oh, yes, good afternoon. We spoke on the telephone. Geoffrey Formal from the estate agent. Yes, absolutely. Would you be Mr. Roper? Not for a big clock. <laughs> yes, we had four bar added the length of the boat race. <laughs> George. <coughs> well, uh, shall we go inside? Of course. I'll hang about for you, George. Might go on the knocker, see if I can get a few pickings. Right. Uh, George, <laughs> don't chat to the driver. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, sir. 
son. Now listen, have you uh, daft old ladies around here? Uh, this is the last remaining unit in this small, rather exclusive uh, development. And I may say they are much sought after. Yeah, we had trouble finding the place. Uh, yes. uh, this is the entrance hall leading through to the cloakroom, through lounge, and affording access to the first floor by means of a staircase. Oh, that's a novelty. <laughs> lounge. Four mile, as in boat race. <laughs> Watch it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So light and spacious. All such big windows. Yes, but the local window cleaner's very willing, or so I'm told. <laughs> What's this? The patio. Ideal for late night barbecues. <laughs> <laughs> barbecues, George. <laughs> you shove sticks into things and roast them over red hot charcoal, as I will shortly prove to you if you don't stop trying me out. <laughs> The, uh, the garden is very manageable. Are you keen on gardening? No, I'll let him run to weed. <laughs> I grew a nettle once. Oh, it's about to start. Oh, yeah, I say, she's a bit of all right, isn't she? Yeah, next door, too, eh? Uh, yes, yes, she is. Yeah. yeah, a bit on the skinny side, but there you go. I like a bit of meat on myself. Mm. That's my wife. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot to be said for skinny women. <laughs> Do you live next door? Oh, I'm, I'm so pleased. I mean, I, I think it's so important, you know, to have nice neighbours. Yes, yes it is indeed. <laughs> a damn fireplace. Huh? A Adam. <laughs> Kitchen. Oh. Fully fitted, plenty of cupboard space. Uh, <laughs> a bottle rack uh, for your wine. Or your brown ale. Um, a large space for all your equipment. And uh, how big is your freezer? Oh, it varies. <laughs> Depending on how optimistic I feel. Hey, uh, what's this big hole in the sink? Oh. Waste disposal. You uh, put your waste down there, potato peeling, so forth. Well, they fall in the cupboard. <laughs> No, I don't know, Mildred. It's a bit posh for us, isn't it? Oh, don't worry about it, George. When you sit there in your vest, scratching yourself, it'll be instant Coronation Street. <laughs> you know I mean, it doesn't, you know, I don't feel like home. Uh, well, it's not home. Yeah, well, I like the place we live in, you see. I then like why home. are you moving? Oh, that's the council, see? They want to knock me down. <laughs> yes? Yeah, well, it's compulsory purchase order, see? They want to build fly-unders or something. Oh. Yes. Well, you see, the area has gone down dreadfully since we moved there. Yes, and the house really... I mean, it hasn't felt the same since the young ones left. Oh, quite, quite. It, um... It is a sad time for a mother when they leave. You what? Well, and a father too, of course. Oh, I wasn't their father. Oh? No, they had three or four different fathers, as far as I know. <laughs> oh, they were our lodgers. Oh. Uh, sh sh shall we, uh, move, move, move upstairs? Yes, right. Yeah, yeah it, it's very nice, but uh, uh, there's not much call for gold watches these days. Well, I'll give you a couple of quid for it. Well, Sotheby's valued it at £250. You haven't got any lead or rags that haven't been valued at Sotheby's, have you? <laughs> oh. oh. I don't see the point in having two loos. <laughs> Well, supposing you both wanted to, uh, uh, at the same time? Well, she can wait. <laughs> anyway, I'm in here. And that little one hasn't got a lid on it. George, that is a B-Day. Oh, oh, yeah. They're yeah, coming useful for washing the mud off me wellies. George, how can you be so ignorant? They don't have mud in Hampton Wick. Now, get downstairs while I look around here in peace. Oh. No, you can't. Oh, yeah. What are you looking at? I'm working class. Uh, yeah, I suppose so. What do you work at? Oh, well, I don't at the moment. See, uh, part-time. I've got this bad back. 
My day says you'll sponge as a taxpayer and put it on bingo. And it's the life of Riley. Does he? Well, you tell your dad that I'm working class and bloody proud of it. My daddy says you should be put up against the wall and shot. <laughs> your dad sounds a right toppy nosed middle class twit. That's what my mummy says. Yeah, well, good for her. If I saw your dad, I'd knock his block off. Daddy, he wants to knock your block off. <laughs> Come on, sorry about this. <coughs> Home. What a nice little boy. Nice? Mm. He's walked, that kid. He's like his father. Are you working class? I'm sorry about that. He will play, you know. No, uh, where were we? Yeah, I was just saying, out the back there, I could knock up a few working class ferret hutches uh, and perhaps a pigeon loft. Pigeons? Yeah, well, we can't keep them where they are. You see, the neighbours complain of the droppings. <laughs> of course, there won't be any room for the coal. We can keep that in the bath, can't we? <laughs> yeah, well, I've got to have some space out there to burn the mattresses. That is between sponging and playing bingo, of course. Come on, you'll be. <laughs> We'll be in touch. I am ashamed of you, George. I thought I'd always been ashamed of you, but I didn't know what being ashamed of you was. <coughs> well, what are they like? Well, uh, she's all right. Don't think much of him, though. Well, what's wrong with him? He's working class. I'm bloody proud of it. <laughs> well, I like it, George. And I think we ought to buy it. Yeah, I heard you. I heard you all night in with a pillow over me head. <laughs> well, I mean, the bulldozers have been moving in soon. You can't just sit here like King Canute. Well, I don't see what burning cakes has got to do with it. <laughs> anyway, why can't we take the council's offer? A nice flat on the 18th floor, Gate School Point. I am not going to live in a vertical slum. Yeah, well, I feel happier there than my own sort. Yeah, there's another reason why we're not going to live there. Oh, yeah. I can't get the anger rolled in my own. Ah, oh, George, and with all the practice you've had. <laughs> well, old Clint Eastwood, Clint Eastwood can do it with one hand on the back of an horse. And he's wearing a blanket. <laughs> Perhaps it's just as well. <laughs> I wasted enough of these fag papers to do out the lounge. <laughs> morning, George. Morning, morning, Mrs. Hart. The car's outside. The gearbox is in perfect working order. Oh, it's about time. Apart from the fact that it's ever so slightly back to front. <laughs> it's not difficult. I mean, first is now fourth, second is third, third is second, and first is fourth. Only I wouldn't uh, advise going into fourth, George. Huh? It's inclined to slip into reverse. <laughs> perfect working order. Well, you can't get the parts, Mrs. Hart. I've had to use parts from five different cars. Nearly got caught twice. <laughs> this is why I let this jack of all trades get his hands on our cars. I mean, I, I must have wanted my head examined. Psychiatry, I know a bit about that. Now, you sit down. Be quiet. Is it safe? Oh, yeah. Right, George, you and I are going to Hampton Wick this morning in that car, backwards if necessary, and have a look at our house. Hi. <laughs> Warden Formal, good morning. Oh, good morning. Uh, my name is Roper. Um, I was viewing 46 Peacock Crescent yesterday. Yes, Mr. Roper? Mrs. Roper. <laughs> oh, the lady in the nylon simulated leopard skin coat. <laughs> yes. I'm a friend of the earth. <laughs> uh, can I speak to Mr. Formile, please? Uh, Mr. Formile? I'm afraid he's in conference with our Mr. Wagfinger. At... Uh, well, um, actually, we, we wanted to uh, see the house again. Um, it would be all right if we picked up the keys, say, at about ooh, 12 o'clock? Yes, that'll be fine. Uh, Goodbye. Goodbye. They want to view the house again. Oh, dear. <laughs> And it's worse now than it was before. Yeah, Mildred. Yeah, it's got the windscreen wipers going. <laughs> Every time it rains, we're going to have to suffer the J wipe frog. Now, George, if we do happen to see any of the neighbours, don't... Oh, George, 
It's sold. Sickle. <laughs> <laughs> Pow! Splat! Watch out! Ah! Oh, with one flick of his powerful tail, the subaquatic crime buster smashed the spear gun from the hands of the mafia frogman. Splash! Help, help! Glug, glug! Uh. What in God's name are you reading him? Shortman. He's half man, half fish. Mm. Fights crime underwater. Mm. What sort of crime takes place underwater? I don't know. Codnapping. <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking at? Oh, just some people outside 46, that's all. Oh, yes, they were here yesterday. Sold? I didn't know it was sold. It isn't. We don't want it sort living next door, do we? What is he, Daddy? What? Um... Oh, half man, <laughs> half fish. Can I see him? No, Tristram. You go and play in the garden. Mummy wants to talk to Daddy. Are you going to have a row? <laughs> Just don't have anyone. Half fish don't what? No. <laughs> Did you let those poor people come all the way over here for nothing? Um. Well, uh. <laughs> What's the point if it's gone? Oh, George, I. I just wanted another look at the bathroom, you know, that lovely avocado, low-level suite. Well, we got low-level suite at home. Yeah, only since the system fell off the wall. <laughs> George, you don't care, do you? I mean, you don't care that this house has been sold? No, I like it. Always did. Oh. No, we'd have bought it if it wasn't sold. What's that? <laughs> oh, George! No, I can't accept that. I am not a snob, Anne. You ask anyone. Well, anyone who matters. Oh, yes, you are. You buy the Financial Times just to impress the news agent. Nonsense. I just don't want to be knee-deep in ferrets and pigeon droppings. That's all. It's not much to ask, is it? I mean, he even grows thistles in his garden. Oh, the ultimate crime. Oh, I'm telling you, Anne, that man could drop the bottom out of the property market for miles around. Well, I think it's mean putting a sold sign up. They look like a nice couple. I'm sure they are. Apart from him. <laughs> and his friend. Did you see his friend? Yes. He offered me a goldfish for the grandfather clock. Well, there you are. There's no guarantee they haven't got children. Swarms of children. Tristan would get nips. Oh, for heaven's sake, Jeffrey. I just feel sorry for them, that's all. Oh. I'm sorry. It bounced. Yeah, damn near hit me. Oh, it's you. Yes. I don't think we match each other properly. My name's Tristan. Yeah, it would be. Oh, uh, Roper. George Roper. Are you going to offer me a sweetie? Uh, oh. Um, I mean, I won't take it, because Daddy says I mustn't take sweeties from strange men. Oh, well, right. Shall I tell him you offered me one? Well, no, no. <laughs> uh, Mildred, can we go now? All right, George, just a minute. Oh, hello, love. It's Tristram, isn't it? Now, don't offer him any sweets. It's a trap. <laughs> Do you got any little boys or girls? Uh, no, dear. Not yet. Not yet? Oh, you are, Tristram. I couldn't see you from the window. I'm from next door. This is uh, my little horror. Oh, how do you do? This is mine. <laughs> oh, well, it's not compulsory. We were very nearly neighbours. Yes. Um, did you have to come far? No, oh, dear, no, not far. Mind you, it took us nearly an hour and a half. An hour and a half? Oh, dear. Well, would you like a cup of tea? Oh. <laughs> Zap, pow, gzunk. <laughs> You're all right, Tristan. Here where I can see you. You come through. Thank you. Jeffrey, we've got company. Oh. Um, this is Mr. and Mrs. Uh... Uh, Roper. Mm. Oh, good, yes. You've been looking around next door. Uh... Uh, yes, we did phone this morning, but uh, you were in conference with your Mr. Wagfinger. Who? Oh, yes, quite. <laughs> Do sit down. Thank you. Uh, uh, do you think it's all right? I mean, I've got me working class trousers on. <laughs> Sit. <laughs> oh, what a lovely room. And the carpet. Oh, I do like a nice deep pile on the floor, don't you, George? <laughs> nice deep pile of what? Um, yes, uh, tea. Uh, would you prefer China or Indian? Oh, yes, please. Yes. I like the one the monkeys drink. <laughs> Lemon. Uh, no thanks, I'll stick with the tea. Oh, no. uh, yes, we'll have lemon, thank you. Oh, what a charming little boy. Uh, is he your only one? Yes. 
Yes, we were going to have another. But the dishwasher came first. Ah, <laughs> oh, you can't cuddle a dishwasher. He can. <laughs> uh, do you have swarms of, uh, I mean, uh, any, any children at all? No, no. Oh, uh, we did try. Once or twice. <laughs> but, uh, no. <laughs> We haven't got a dishwasher either. <laughs> no, well, we thought best not. There are too many working class kids as there is. And we breathe like fruit flies our lot once we start. <laughs> Lucky there's a war every now and then to thin us out. <laughs> I don't suppose you were in the war, were you? Uh, uh, I was exempt for medical reasons. I hadn't been born. <laughs> uh, yeah, you see, there's always an excuse. <laughs> Tristram? Doing? I'm listening, I'm listening. Disgraceful. You take after your mother. Go inside. <laughs> now, the thing about the war is, you had all sorts of people with one thing in common. Hmm. They were getting killed. Oh, no. Yeah, well, it was that. But the main thing was that you had the Duke and the Dustman standing shoulder to shoulder, side by side. Doing what? Hey? Um, well, getting killed mainly. <laughs> no, but the point I'm trying to make is that was the war that was supposed to end class prejudice and have our lot take over. <laughs> There'll now be a silver collection in his clog. Do you think we might be able to change the subject? Ah, oh, what a pity the house next door has been sold. Yes, yes, it is a pity, isn't it, Geoffrey? Um, about, about the war? It hasn't been sold. Come <laughs> Next door it hasn't been sold, has it, Daddy? Ah, well, uh... uh you it... told me before it hasn't been sold, you said. Well, who, uh, who, who, uh, who, who said that it, uh, it had been? Well, there's a sign on the board out there, so... Really? So there is. <laughs> you can't rely on staff these days. Oh, Geoffrey. No, 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 it's that wag finger chap. Absolutely useless. Have to go. I mean, there's nothing to stop us putting down a deposit. Well, uh, I can't think of anything. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we've got our new neighbours. Mm, I'm afraid it does. <laughs> oh, well, cheer up, George. You said you liked it. Oh, yeah, but that was when it was sold, Mildred. We can't afford it. Oh, yes, we can. Once we get the compensation from the council. Of course, sir, uh, you'll have to get yourself a job. Hey? <laughs> It's all right. Get out of the bumper.